The Fast Track Accessory Activation Track, or FAAT as I will call it, depends on the wheels of the train to conduct electricity between the continuous outside rail and the outside and the other outside insulated rail on the FAAT. As long as the rails and the wheels are clean, this will provide relatively smooth operation of the Gateman accessory. But should the wheels or the rails be dirty or corroded, the operation of the Gateman will be jerky and unsatisfactory. In this video, I will demonstrate an electronic circuit which I have deployed, which, which I have developed, which smooths the operation of the automatic gateman when driven by the fast track accessory activation track. To help me make the case, I have stacked the deck and deliberately used some white out on the rails to simulate dirt and corrosion on the wheels. Notice the jerky operation before my circuit is wired in. When I was moving my breadboard to the train table, I was reminded of one of the big disadvantages of solderless breadboards, and that is that the circuit is very delicate and it is easy to dislodge wires. When I first connected my circuit at the train table, it worked well, but when I tried to straighten out some wires, it stopped functioning. I moved the oscilloscope to the train table to help troubleshoot, but even that did not help. I had to retreat to the workbench to finally get it to work. Here is my smoothing circuit operating successfully. Notice that for each time the train passes, the gateman door opens once crisply and stays open for a just a little bit beyond when the train has passed. I have added a flashing light to the circuit board to indicate the circuit is operating successfully. The other thing I learned is that the circuit operates better if I place a diode between the outside rail and ground on the circuit board. This is my workbench for designing and testing electronics to enhance the operation of post-war Lionel trains. In particular, I am working on an enhancing circuit for the Fast Track Accessory Activation Pack. My power comes from the accessory terminals of a 1033 90-watt transformer. The circuit features a power supply that converts this 18-volt AC to a nice clean 12 volts DC. You can see the 11.9-volt reading on my digital multimeter. I do my experiments on Radio Shack solderless breadboard. I also make use of an oscilloscope to look at waveforms. I test my circuits on the workbench before deploying them on my layout. I am using an Lionel button to simulate the contact of the train wheels sending signals to the automatic gateman from the accessory activation track. The red light is connected to terminals of the relay to simulate the operation of the automatic gateman. Notice that the light stays on for about five seconds after the button is pushed. This is achieved by wiring the 555 timer chip to operate in the basic A stable mode. The circuit is designed so that if a se second signal is received, the circuit resets and begins the count again. This way, the automatic gateman should remain on constantly when the train is passing. This should result in much smoother operation than when operated only by the accessory activation track. This is especially true when the wheels or track are corroded or dirty. 
Here's what the components of the circuit look like. I have built the circuit on a Radio Shack solderless breadboard. My design features a 12 volt DC power supply which is powered by the 18 volt AC accessory terminals of the 1033 transformer. The power supply uses a rectifier bridge, a solid state 3 pin 12 volt regulator, and a larger 1000 microfarad capacitor as a filter. During my experimentation, I discovered that the regulator IC became very hot. To deal with this, I attached the heat sink, which made things much better. The workhorse of the circuit is this small 8-pin dual inline 555 timing chip. It's been around since the late 1970s, but it is still available and still is useful for a number of timing functions. The delay of the 555 is determined by the carefully selected values of a key capacitor and a key resistor. The reference book I have found the most useful is Radio Shack Engineer's Mini Notebook by Forrest M. Mims III, and its title is Timer, Op Amp in Optoelectronic Circuits and Projects. The output of the 555 chip is fed into the base of an NPN 2N222 uh, transistor. This transistor drives the relay. This relay isolates the circuit from the accessories and allows more power to be delivered than could otherwise be delivered by the 555 chip and the transistor by itself. The relay switches the 18 volt accessory voltage of the 1033 transformer to the automatic gateman. Here are the schematics for my circuits. You may want to pause to study them. This is the power supply that I use from taking the 18 volts from the transformer to 12 volt DC. It features a rectifier bridge, a smoothing capacitor, as well as a 12 volt semiconductor voltage regulator. This is the wiring diagram for using the fast track accessory activation track with the automated gateman. The wire from the insulated outside rail goes to pin 2 of the 555 chip. The wire from the middle rail goes to point to post A on the transformer. And finally, the wire from the continuous outside rail goes to both post U on the transformer and also to the DC ground on the circuit board. Here is the smoothing circuit for the automatic gateman accessory when used with the Lionel Fast Track accessory activation track. Its main components are the 555 timing chip, an NPN transistor, and a relay. Please note that C1 filters false signals caused by long leads. Next, notice that R2 and C2 set the timer constant to be about 2.5 seconds for the timing chip. And finally, C3 is the persistence capacitor that makes sure the operation is smooth. Questions? You can contact me using the information provided on the card.